Hi, my name is Erin. My name is Emily. My name is Rita. And I'm Erica. We're geotechnical engineers and geoscientists who work for BGC Engineering. Our job is to understand how natural hazards affect our communities and come up with solutions to protect them. British Columbia has a varied landscape that includes lots of mountainous regions. In these areas, debris flows can occur. A debris flow is a natural hazard where water, soil, and rock mix together to uh, flow down a steep creek at great speeds. This can pose a significant risk to people who live downstream. A few things need to come together to make a debris flow. You need a steep creek channel, like on the side of a mountain. Water to move the rock and soil down slope. And of course, rock and soil to mix with the water to create a mixture that is like concrete. And they all combine to form a debris flow. The need for water is why debris flows often follow periods with lots of rainfall. If you'd like to see photos or videos of real life debris flows, head over to YouTube and try looking up terms like debris flow or mudslide. Now, let's make our own debris flow. You will need a cutting board or other flat surface, saran wrap, a wide, shallow container like a baking sheet, a few bowls, some wooden skewers, a few apples, townspeople, water, and debris. Debris can be rock or soil or both. We're going to use ground coffee, rice, and dried beets but feel free to experiment with whatever materials you have around the house. You'll notice the ground coffee is relatively small, the rice is medium sized, and the dried beans are relatively large. Which material do you think will travel the furthest and have the greatest impact on the community? Let's set up our steep mountain creek and town. Wrap your cutting board in saran wrap and place at an angle. Use whatever you can find, like Lego or candy, to represent townspeople or homes downstream. We'll start with the cup, place a handful on the slope, and then slowly add water until it flows toward the tap. Note how far did it flow out and which parts of the town were affected. Next, we'll try the rice. Same as before, let's place a small handful on the slope and slowly add some water until it flows toward the town. How does the run out compare to the coffee? Finally, we'll use the dried beans. How does this debris flow compare to the others? You'll notice the materials travel different distances. The coffee, which is the smallest, traveled the furthest, and some of the largest dried beans stayed on the slope and didn't run out into the community. Generally, debris flows that travel the furthest are the greatest risk to communities downstream. The job of a geoscientist is to map out areas where people are most at risk from debris flows. So how do you protect communities like this one that are downstream of a debris flow hazard? Engineers often design structures to reduce or mitigate the risks that these towns face. There are many different kinds of mitigation structures. We're going to be building one type of structure today. So you're going to build this out of your apple slices, and your wooden skewers to create a fence-like structure like this. Place the fence-like structure at the bottom of your debris channel. This type of structure is called an open check dam, and it's intended to retain the larger, more damaging particles from the debris and allow the water to flow through. Let's see how our dam performs. Notice that the beams are caught by the dam, preventing them from causing damage to the town. Now that you know how debris flow mitigation structures work, let's head outside and see some real structures in action. Hi, I'm Emily. And I'm Lauren. And we're both engineers at BGC Engineering that work on debris flow projects in Canada and around the world. Debris flow structures are installed on creeks all over the world. Let's take a look at a couple that are close to home here in British Columbia. On McKay Creek in North Vancouver, a debris flow barrier protects neighborhoods downstream. You can visit the barrier yourself by walking along the power line trail from the bottom of the gross grind. Just like in the kitchen demo, the McKay Creek barrier is constructed with solid sides and an open grate that allows water to pass through and larger debris to be held back. 
Further to the north in Whistler, BC, you can see the Whistler Creek Barrier by walking up from Creekside Village or looking down from the Creekside Gondola. The barrier, which measures over 14 meters tall, uses a different design but the same concept as the McKay Creek Barrier. Another option to protect downstream areas from debris flow impacts is to use a flexible net, like at Britannia Beach along the Sea to Sky Highway. This photo shows the net under construction. Unlike with solid barriers, the net is designed to be flexible when impacted by the debris flow. It still allows water to be passed and debris held back by the net. As geological engineers, we're fortunate to spend our careers helping keep people and communities safe from natural hazards like debris flows. If this field interests you, taking courses that prepare you for a science or engineering degree is a great place to start. You can always reach us at bgcengineering.ca or on Instagram to learn more as well.